This is what an authentic letter of Paul has to say about who Jesus was in relationship to God. That Christ is the head of every man and God is the head of Christ. Christ, the Messiah, has a God. He does not say that Jesus is God. Where did he say Hold on. Looking for the blessed heart and the glorious appearing of the great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. What's the reference? Am I right in saying that Paul calls Jesus Christ God? And the reason for that is because the God of right the Jews and the God of Christians he enters into time again and again and again and again and he interacts with these people who are in that time Allah does no such thing And the God of the earliest disciples of Jesus. Well, I wouldn't use the word Jews or a word. I, mean, I, I just look at Scripture alone, and when I look at Scripture alone, I make a distinction between the entity that is called Allah and the God of the Hebrews and the God of the Christians. I don't try to use. I don't try to use philosophy as opposed to just using okay. the Scriptures alone. Okay, I, 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 I do use philosophy, philosophy unfortunately. So, uh, so you said earlier on that the God you said you were sure that the God of the Israelites was not the God of Islam. Is that Whoever you? Allah is is not the God of the Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. Why do you think that? Why, do you, why using the scriptures? Could you? Is that an argument or yeah. some evidence for that? So Genesis, I think Islam says that Allah. I mean, there's so many, but just one simple one. Allah cannot enter one. into His creation, right? Allah doesn't enter his own creation, into time, into space. And yet somehow in Genesis chapter 18, we have Abraham conversing with God in a tent and they're both eating. Uh, we have Jesus prophesying about his own death and resurrection. And yet Muhammad comes along and he says that no, Jesus was not crucified. So you have these, God doesn't contradict himself by sending prophets with different messages. It's just unfathomable. So I can only say that whoever Allah is, I mean, I can give you other reasons, but just using those two alone, the fact that God, Allah, said, Allah doesn't enter into time and creation, and yet the, the God of the Bible, who does enter into time and creation, he spends time with his people in a very personified, personal, intimate way. It's a very philosophical way you're putting this, by the way. No, it's not. It's the scripture. You said entering into the, that's a very philosophical language. No, no, that's scripture. It's Genesis chapter 18. Can I show you, it says on Wikipedia, I mean, you may just miss that, about the word Allah, um, is the Arabic word for God in the Abrahamic religions. In the English language, the word generally refers to God in Islam. The word is thought to be derived from a contraction of Al-Illah, which means the God. And it's related to Allah, which is a Hebrew word, and El, the Aramaic word for God. So they actually come from the same root uh, in Semitic languages. So it's not an alien word that's introduced that, uh, that no, no, no Hebrew would have recognized. He would have recognized, oh, that's just how the Hebrews pronounce our word for God. And secondly, when uh, Christians say in Egypt or in the Middle East, when they call on God, what do they call him? What's the word they use when they call on God? Christians. Well, so far, it depends on their religion. Though, isn't it? No, 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 it doesn't. No, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't it doesn't depend on the religion. When, 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 a, when, a when, when Christians in the Middle East, who are Arabic speaking, when they call on God, what word do they use? So, well, what is the actual word they use? What I'm trying to say to you, I'm not using social or philosophical kind of like, because I can determine anything using philosophical or social construct, constructs, right? I can make any argument using social and philosophical constructs. When I stick with the Bible and I look at Bible versus what the Quran says, I'm saying, look, there are contradictions and there are discrepancies. Whoever Allah is does not match the God of the Bible in any way, shape, or form. Just, um, before we go on to it, could you just, Jesus perhaps address, if you don't mind, you haven't uh, addressed answer, the two points uh, answer the question that I made. When Christians call. Oh, you haven't addressed the two points I okay. Can I, I will in a second and then I'll address that. Can you just answer? When Christians in the Middle East, Arabic, when they call on God, what's the word they use to call on God in, in prayer? What's the word they use? Allah. Allah. Christians call on Allah. Millions and millions of Christians call on the precious name of Allah. What's the name of God in Islam? Allah. They call on the same God. So, there are many, many religions in the Middle East and they all use the same name or the same word, Allah. But they clearly follow different philosophy, but they use the same word. If I use the word night and I say K-N-I-G-H-T, right, like the dark night, or if I use the word night, N-I-G-H-T, right? Now there are two, they're, they're, 
They mean two different I'm, things, I'm but they sound of, the same. I'm thinking you understand? Of, I'm thinking of the amen and But this is why I'm, I'm trying to not use similar, philosophical amen or cultural. I'm saying because if you do that, you can I do. arrive. I do because. But you're not you're not addressing my specific okay. arguments of Genesis chapter 18 and the but fact what that. What happened in Genesis 18? That so I just told you. Remind me, I'm a bit dumb. So, okay, well, let me ask you: Can Allah enter into creation? What do you mean enter into creation? Can Allah? come into creation and has interact with human beings? That's a very philosophical question. It's not. Well, in my view it is. Well, it's uh, biblical. It can be taken in different ways. Now, there are hadith, uh, and um, there's possibly in the Quran as well, which talk about Allah entering into, um, into in coming down to earth, or the presence descending from the heavens to the believers in the, in the third quarter of the night. So there's this, I forget it's a hadith, but it's in the Quran. There's a sense that God's, uh, Allah's presence is uh, close to the believers at that time of the night. I need to look up the reference. Well, that means that God entered into creation. Again, that's a very philosophical, abstract, metaphysical question, which uh, I, I'm not um, well, familiar with. Uh, so I think the idea of... There's a wonderful verse in the Bible that says about the tabernacle, you know, the temple in Rome. Uh, I think it's in one uh, Chronicles, where it says, can God be contained in this temple that had been made by human hands? Uh, can, the, can he who made the heavens and the earth be contained in this building? Of course, the, the implied answer is no. God cannot be contained in a human body, like Christians believe, or in a, in a temple made by human hands, as uh, Jews believe. Uh, so I'm not sure they are that different. Uh, your other point about Jesus, what was it about Jesus uh, predicting his death? on the cross. I'm not sure that relates to the concept of God, but that's a different issue. What I'm trying to say to you, the principle of Islamic theology is that Allah does not enter into time and creation. Well, I said that there is this mystical verse. I mean, um, can you show me this verse? Maybe, well, 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 maybe that can help us. Oh, you, you, but until then... I, but it's, it's well known that when um, God... That, uh, I'll show it to you, because I'm not saying I know what it means. I mean, I think it muddies the waters a bit about the... I had a debate here one time where a Christian, he proposed, he said, look, when Allah met Moses, right, Allah was in the burning bush. And the, there must have been hordes of Muslims were saying, no, that's not true. And one, one of the Muslims gave an example and said, it's like when you leave a, a message on a phone, right, the person is not there, but the voice is there. So they try to use this equivocation and say, oh, the burning bush was the phone, but Allah wasn't there. And it fell through because actually you realize when you read, when you read it for itself, and you, when you read what the Bible is saying, it makes it very clear that God is actually there. He's literally there, right, in person. And if it, so what I'm saying to you is that Allah dwells in this unapproachable, abstract, objective, there's no way he can interact with his creation. Let, 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 let me respond to this. I think there Hold on. Verses, but the Bible, uh, from, the Bible makes it very clear from both Old and New Testament that the living God, because he's living, he not only enters into his creation, he interacts with his creation. He has he spends time especially with his creation called man. But okay, if this if is I, this I, is this is totally removed from okay, so address from this. I think many Christians, you're right, do believe that God is everywhere. But we, we Muslims don't believe that God no, is we don't believe that. We, we, many Christians do, in my experience, of talking to thousands of Christians. You're not talking to many Christians. I, and, when, and when I was a Christian I believed that they believe God was everywhere. But God isn't in the toilet. He isn't in our chests. He is the Lord most high. He doesn't live in these places. He's not like a, a pagan deity. Coming back to, um, there are many verses in the Quran that says that Allah is very near to the believers. That he's nearer than their jugular vein. He's, he's more than close. He's closer than close, according to the Quran. He's also the transcendent God. He is, he is before all things. He is over us. He is the Lord, the King, the Judge, the Great Majestic God. So he's both... No, I'm, talking, I'm quoting the Quran here. The Quran says that God is very near to us. And he says, he says to believers to comfort them that God is near. He also, it also says that God is closer to you than your jugular vein. It also says another place in the Quran, when, when, when three or four believers gather together, Allah, God is the fourth. And when five or fewer gather together, you know, He is there in their midst. He is there in their midst, according to the Quran. Now, uh, uh, um, so Allah enters into creation, the, is that what you're telling well, you see, you're using language which is not Quranic, so I, I, I'm not going to use that language. Allah, I'm just going to tell you what 
what the Quran says. If you want to, you can interpret it. Telling me, but you can interpret it your way. Behind what you're telling me, but right? we don't do philosophy, right? There's we don't do thinking, philosophy, right? Correct. We don't. Well, let's but there's a philosophy. thinking behind the fact that if Allah's closest to your jugular, are you saying that Allah then can enter into creation? No, I'm saying that for what? Quran, what I'm saying is, according to the Quran, yeah. that He is closer to us than our jugular vein. Now, how this is normally understood is that uh, He is with us by His knowledge, not by His personal self. Because there is nothing like uh, unto Him, He's completely unlike us. So, so it's, I don't quite understand that philosophically, but that's what it teaches. So God is not a remote deity who's unfeeling and, and, uh, and unknown to, to human beings. On the, contrary, uh, on the contrary, we know a great deal about God because He has talked about His attributes, His character. He is the most, comp the, the most frequently um, used names of God in the Quran, virtually every chapter of the Quran begins with, in Arabic, in the name of God, ar rahman Ar-Rakim, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Sure. So God's, uh, God's attributes are one of love, compassion and mercy. Sounds a bit like the teaching of Jesus. But unlike Christians, we don't believe that God killed himself or killed his, killed his son you are on the cross. Because you haven't addressed either of my points here. I thought I had. I don't think you have. Well, in fact, I know you have. I thought I had uh, abundantly. What have How I does Allah enter into creation? Well, there has to be... You, you, what you're saying... Did you not hear what I just said? I quoted... Um, let me quote to you the, the passage I couldn't remember where it was here. Um, there are several of them. It says here that God comes down over his nearest heaven to us during the day of Arafat. Okay, so uh, no, hang on, I'm finished. And also during the last third part of the night, as I was trying to say, as mentioned by the prophet. So there is a sense that he descends to the third uh, descends to us during the, la the third part of the night as mentioned the prophet. Now I don't know what that means but um, the way that it's normally understood is that he is with us by his knowledge not by his personal self. But nevertheless this language is used that God in a sense comes to us in the third part of the night. Also that God is near to us. The Quran says that in several places. Also it says that he's closer to us than our jugular vein. Now, it, this doesn't affirm your, lang your philosophical language that you're using, your man-made philosophical language. But, but um, what it does say is that God isn't just remote, he is also close to the believers. So I think that answers your question. Now, you may not agree with the answer, but I think it answers your point. Now, I've got one point to you, if I may. Did you believe that Jesus was God? So, is this is about the God um, question. Is Jesus God? What I'm trying to say to you is, you know, is that Allah does not, classic Islamic theology, Allah does not enter into time and space. What, what, what classic Islamic theology have you read out of interest? Well, Can you I give me your name, a book perhaps? Uh, I mean, I've read some of your Sahih Islam, Sahih, uh, Sahih uh, Islam? Sorry, Sahih Muhammad, Sahih, Sahih Muhammad, Muhammad. Uh, Bahari. Right, we've read some of these, and they're, they're, these are not hold just. Hold if hold I may, these are not hold uh, classic hold scholars. Hold on, hold on. They're not classic scholars. Islamic theology. Yeah. Are you saying that Allah enters into time and creation? I've already I, I need to know this because okay. the way you've answered it, when I've asked you this question before, you said that because Allah is somewhat closer to your jugular, because somehow He comes to you at night, or because you've given me some kind of arbitrary answers. Yet I specifically ask you, does he enter into creation, into time? You said that this is me using particular philosophical language. I said no. I'm saying to you that the God of the Bible is not the God of is not the God of the Muslims. And the reason for that is because the God of right, the Jews and the God of Christians, he enters into time again and again and again and again, and he interacts with these people who are in that time. Allah does no such thing. And I'm saying to you, does Allah actually enter into time. You've asked that over and over. Yeah, because you, you haven't been clear in your well, answer. No, you see, maybe... The, well, thank you. I'm, I, I appreciate that you'll give me one last chance. Um, I think... There's no um, point in doing it. I think um, I've given you answers. I've quoted from the Quran. I've quoted from the Hadith. I've said it in what sense God comes to us, say, in the third part of the night, or that he's closer to us than our jugular vein, or the repeated Quranic statement that he is near, but in a particular sense that it's, it's by his knowledge, not by his personal self. Now, this is not answering in your language, but the language of Islam. 
And he, 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 and hang on a second. Now, th this, th y you may not find this satisfying. Uh, I'm sorry if you don't, and we'll just have to agree to disagree. But I want to come on. I want to move on to an important question here about the nature of God as well. Hang on a second. Before you move no, on, no, hang on a second. Conceding that ha Anna doesn't enter into time. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm not conceding anything. I've told you the Islamic answer. I, I want to move on to a very important question about the nature of God as well. The Christians hold, which is very much against the teaching of Judaism and Islam and all the prophets of God, and that is the idea of God dying. Because do you believe that Jesus is God? Yes. Right. So you believe that God died on the cross? Uh, in his humanity, yes. Right. So his deity didn't die, but his humanity died. Well, what's this? You tell me. I'm, you are the one who brought it up. What is this? Okay. Let me put it this way. In the, in Does the... a man die? When he's dead? Well, yes, of course. Okay. Is he still is some is there some aspect of his being which is still alive? I think so, yes. Is he still dead then? Uh, he dies to this mortal life. So is that what is death then? Can death is a passing God? from this life to the next life. But the man is still alive? Yes. Yeah. Then what is let me ask you again, what is that? If he's still alive, I, I, we, we've agreed. Now let me no, ask you a question. You do, do you believe God is like a man? He just dies like a man? I think that Jesus Christ became uh, when he was crucified on the cross and he went through the process of death and three days later he resurrected because it's like the plan prince if you take a piece no, can, can of you the question? One second. No, can you ask the question? If you don't die like a man, I wasn't asking if he died on the third on. day or hold on. If you put wood in water, what normally happens? No, I what happens? If you put wood in water, what happens? It gets wet. It gets wet and no. expands, floats. It oh. floats, right? Why? If you put iron in water, what happens? It sinks, right? So the particular nature, right? The way death works, if you have a particular nature, it keeps you. But Jesus, right, we know that guys is no longer so we know that Christ, he had a divine nature and death couldn't hold a divine nature. Let me respond to this. So never dies. This is um, a, a passage in the, me, in the New Testament that's talking about God. And I want you to ask but yourself... But it's strange how we're going to this subject. No, it's not strange because we hear the nature of God, uh, how, how different it is from Islam, because we agree... But I've already said to you that my God is not your God. Can I... Can I and I'm making this... Let me finish. Hang on, wait, 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 hang on a second. I'm trying to... There are some aspects of a Christian's belief which have gone astray. They commit idolatry by worshipping a man, they, they, they confess and admit that he's a man, and they worship him as a God. Now this passage in the New Testament is talking about the character of God. Think, about, think of Jesus, and see if this is true of Jesus when I tell you about the character of God. It says here, he, this is God, who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. Now that's a quote from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. What I would say is this, that Jesus doesn't fit this description of God according to the New Testament. Why? Because he was not immortal. This gentleman has already confessed, he's admitted on camera Don't that Jesus died. Mind. But, but God alone has immortality. What does immortality mean? It means someone who does not die. Okay. Jesus, no, I haven't finished. No, I haven't finished yet. Okay. I haven't finished. Tell I haven't me finished. how long you can need. Just a couple more minutes. Thank you. Minutes. Yeah, a couple more minutes. Can you? Do you have the time for more minutes? Not really. Seconds. Give me seconds. Give me four. No, no. I'll, I'll, if you have to, forty seconds. If you have to go, that's fine. I'm just here to wonder. Ground. But if you, what if I'd you, like if you to have to do, let me finish. How about we just do thirty, forty seconds each? Let me. Let me. I could have finished by now. I could have finished by now. We're wasting time by arguing about wasting time. Forty-six. No, I'm not, I haven't agreed to this. So Jesus is not someone who has immortality. He died, according to this gentleman. Yeah. It also says, God dwells in unapproachable light. Did yeah. Jesus dwell in unapproachable light? No, he lived in Galilee, whom no one has ever seen or can see. Did people see Jesus in Nazareth? Four Gospels said that Jesus was seen by his mother, his sisters, his brothers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Romans. Jesus was not the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Sovereign, because this description fits Allah. It fits the God of Israel. It does not fit it's okay, Jesus. It's okay.
we know, who know. died, who was not immortal, who was seen, who didn't live in unapproachable light. And so, so I'm afraid your God is. I like that. My God. Is dissimilar to the God of 1 Timothy. Are you finished now? I'm finished now. Okay, so everybody, you know. I'll give you 30 you know, seconds. You know, with the way this young man, this young man read 1 Timothy 3.16, right? 1 Timothy. Now I'm going to read a verse. John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14. Now here's what I'm going to say to you, right? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you going to address me? It says God is immortal. Are you listening to what I'm saying or are you going to question what I'm saying? Now, John 1.1 1, 1 says this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with the, the Word was with God and the Word was God. Listen, let me say that again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then verse 14, and it says, the Word became flesh. Now, this Word that was in the beginning, that was with God, that is God, in John chapter 14, this Word became flesh. Now, I know he's not, I know he's not, is it? I know. But the point I'm trying to make to you, are we all to understand something? John chapter 1, the focus, the emphasis in John chapter 1 is divinity, right? Divinity. So when we say, what is divinity? Divinity is God himself. In the beginning was a word, the word was with God and the word was God. This is divinity. But then we also look at the other aspects, which is humanity. The word became flesh, right? Humanity. So we have these two natures, divinity and humanity, which are coalescing in the person of Jesus Christ. All I'm simply saying to all of you, all of you, anybody who has a, simply, uh, a simple understanding of this word, all you need to do, John chapter 1 verse 1 and John chapter 1 verse 14, is this divinity and is this humanity? If anyone can say to me this is not, please explain why it's not. I will explain now to you with convincing evidence John from, the, from, from, from John's answer. Gospel. Now, in response, I notice, notice that he didn't address at all the teaching of the Apostle Paul, which denies, in effect, that Jesus is God. Because Paul says, he alone, God alone, the sovereign King of Kings, he alone has immortality, which means he does not die. Jesus died, according to these, uh, this gentleman here. He dwells, God dwells, in unapproachable light. Jesus lived in Galilee. It got dark at night, I assume, as well. No one has ever seen God. But hey, lots of people saw Jesus. Or can they see God? But, but lots of people saw Jesus. Now, coming back to the Gospel of John, let's address what Jesus said about the relationship between him and God. This is what Jesus said about himself and God. Very important, but listen to this. And this is eternal life. This is eternal life, my friends. To all you here, I endorse the words of Jesus in John 17. Jesus says this, according to John, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. So Jesus said these words. Yeah. And this, says uh, Jesus, is eternal life. As a Muslim, I endorse this. That they may know you, Jesus pointing away from himself to another person. Sorry, can we not have a chorus of ands, please? And, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Hang on a second. So everybody, I want you I want you all to do. realize what does that mean? He's ready for us. Why are you obeying? Listen. What does it mean? What does it mean? One, two, three, four. What this means is, what this means is, Jesus has a God. He says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only God. You're lying. Jesus is not the only God. See how they upset they get. The Christians get upset when I confront them with the words of Jesus himself. The words of Jesus. Now later on, he says, uh, he says to Mary Magdalene, "I am returning to your father and my father, your God and my God." Jesus says he shares the same God that the uh, that Mary Magdalene shares. So Jesus, in two places in John, says he has a God. You, he says, pointing to God, are the only true God. And then he says, I am returning to your God and my God. Now, does God have a God? Let's apply some simple logic. How many gods are there? There is one God. When the God incarnated as a man, and I want you to understand something. When God became a man, and we've just read the verse. Right? We've just read the verse. When we just read the, we just read the verse when God became a man. Right? When this man came, he submitted to the Father. He submitted himself 
holy to the Father. So when he went around in his humanity speaking about the Father, he was not an atheist. He was not walking around saying, don't believe in God. Don't yeah, no, exactly. he was telling everybody about his God in his humanity. Yeah. Now, when he told us to understand something, Paul said, Paul, this is Paul, his name is Paul Williams. And he was so speaking- what's your, name? what's your name, sir? I don't know your name. Um, it doesn't matter. It matters to me, because you know my name. It doesn't matter to name, me. Sir? What it matters to me. It doesn't matter to me. What is your name, sir? Hey. Now, bro, hey. there you go. Bro, there you want go. To give you his name. Why do you want to share your name? To me? I don't want to give my name to you. Right. It's as simple as that. So no, I don't want to give you my name. Wow. You want to even There's no wow to it. No. Here's my I'm argument to you. Here's my argument to you, right? I'm open to, to sharing my name. He won't even share me his name. Does that make so, so i have just given to you John chapter one. He hasn't addressed it. Let's look at uh, Colossians two. He said that he said that Paul, the original Paul, who wrote down 14 books of the New Testament, that Paul said that Jesus is not a God. I didn't say that. Colossians two chapter nine. Let me read this verse to you, and I want you all just to hear this verse, right? And I'll give you some other verses Paul actually. God dwells in bodily form of Jesus. One, one says, uh, for one in him, chapter one verse. So this 15. is Paul speaking. This is Paul, this is Paul speaking. Paul is saying that in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. So read it, yeah. In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Whoa, whoa, now, whoa, 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 slow down. I want you to listen to this. This is a prophet. This is well. I mean, how can a man have the fullness of the Godhead in him? He read another verse. He read another verse in John, right? And you, I think it was in John. He read John 17. John chapter 19, right? What I'm trying to do. For all of you people here yeah. is that Jesus he has two natures exactly. this is historical this is scholarly and this is the biblical theology we don't agree with Jesus as having one nature just being a man defined as just a prophet because that's not the biblical revelation the biblical revelation is that God has two natures divine and human this is why the demons could look at Jesus and say that you are the son of God. This is why God can say you are my son. Yes. This is why his enemies, the Pharisees and the Sadducees say you are the son of God. This is why the angels could say you are the son of God. This is why the prophets like John the Baptist says you are the son of God. There are so many we have a cloud of witnesses that confirm Jesus Christ, both humanity and his divinity. It is Islam that comes 700 years after the facts, after the crucial evidences. Now remember something, Islam denies, denies the death of Jesus Christ. The death of Jesus Christ, Islam denies it. All of history, all of history confirms confirms the death of Jesus Christ. All of history. But the religion of Islam is the only one on the face of this planet that, can, that says that Jesus Christ did not die. Why is this? Why is this? Why, why does Islam deny the death of Jesus Christ? Why? Why, why does Islam deny this death? It's a different subject. It's very much related to this. It's very much related to this. Because everybody, if you you can deny the very, you know a ladder? A ladder has a, the, the, the very first rung, right? If you are denying the very first rung, there is no way you can go higher. There's no way you can climb up and see anything else. The very foundation, right? The very premise of our revelation is Jesus Christ dying. Their religion, right? And, I've, and I started this with saying that the Jewish, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has nothing to do with this entity that you call Allah. Absolutely. I've made it very clear. Continue, bro. right? I'll see you around. I'll see you around. If I may uh, respond to this, uh, he's now changed the subject. Let's get back to. The, excuse me. Let me let me have my view. He's changed the subject uh, to uh, the uh, the crucifixion. We're talking about who Jesus was. So coming back, let me remind you the passages he's not even commented on. He's not even mentioned. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that God, the sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality. Jesus didn't have immortality. He died upon the cross according to this gentleman who dwells in unapproachable light. Jesus comported with sinners and prostitutes according to the Gospels whom no one has ever seen. But Jesus was seen by lots of people in his lifetime. So Jesus was not the sovereign, the King of Kings according to 1 Timothy. 
Coming back to John's Gospel, he's not addressed the point where Jesus himself is reported of saying, I, I am returning to my to your Father and my Father, to your God and my God. Jesus has a God according to his own words. Now coming back to the Colossians passage, you slipped in something which, which I didn't actually say. I do not believe, and the vast majority of New Testament scholars today do not believe that Colossians was by Paul. Most scholars today believe it's a forgery. Let me tell you from an authentic letter of Paul, according to the biblical scholars, what he really said about Jesus in what in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is what an authentic letter of Paul has to say about who Jesus was in relationship to God. Paul says, I want you to understand, uh, he wants you to understand that Christ is the head of every man and the husband is the head of his wife and God is the head of Christ. God is the head of Christ. Christ, the Messiah, has a God. He does not say that Jesus is God. He could so easily have said what this chap believes. Oh, Jesus is God. No, Jesus has a God, according to Paul. And last of all, I want to quote to you from the earliest gospel that we have. The gospel of Mark. In the gospel of Mark, Jesus denies explicitly that he is God. Let me read to you what it says. As he was sitting out on a journey, a man ran up before Jesus and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. No one is good Continue. but God alone. Continue down the line. Jesus denies here the man calls him good, and Jesus, no, 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 I'm a humble Jew. Don't use an attribute of God. I am but a slave of God, as the Quran says. No, 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 Verse 7. I'm lying. Let me read it again. Good teacher. Good teacher. The man says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, Why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. I'm a humble Jew. Where? Where is that? Where did he say that? Everybody is there. Where is your verse? Okay. I want to read you the verse. Let me. Let me. Right. Looking this, for the great this, blessed I'm hope finished, I'm finished. and the glorious appearing of the great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is what Paul says. Yeah, where, where? Looking, where did he say? Hold on. Looking for the blessed hope the and the glorious appearing is of the great God and Saviour Jesus Christ. What's the question? What is the reference? What is the reference, sir? What is the reference? Am I right in saying that Paul calls so Jesus Christ God? He won't tell us. He won't tell us where it says that. Have you noticed? He doesn't want you to know where it says that Before, because it does. Say that I in the Bible. He is making what things up. Our making initial argument up. began by me saying it's that the God of the Mark. Muslims is nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This was the, the point. initial that point. Jesus died, denied this gentleman, he is God. right, what he tried he to do, he, is God. he went to a particular Mark chapter verse. 10, verse 17. Huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That the God, that the deity of your scriptures, the yeah. deity of your religion is completely, he utterly, totally. To, to, the God of Abraham. to the Yahweh of the Bible. No, no, no. Completely. Let me address that. Let me address that. Now you address Let me address that. The God of the Bible is very clear, very clear that God is eternal. He is immortal. He does not die. Islam says God is eternal. I notice how he's run away now. He doesn't want to hear. God is eternal, immortal, he does not die. This guy believes that Jesus died on the cross. That is in violation of the teaching of the Torah, it's in violation of the teaching of God in the Quran. What he believes is not the God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. It is an invention no, of, other, of men, no, not an invention no, 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 of God. Muhammad. And that's it. On that one point alone, on that one point alone, I have destroyed his argument. On that one point alone, there's nothing more to be said. That is why he has run away. Not because he didn't want to listen to you. End of. Good to see you. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah.